Hi, my name is Erwin and this is a Unity tutorial about animation. And I know that there are many uh, tutorials about creating simple animations with the built-in animation editor in, inside Unity, but none of them explain what happens if you move an object around after you have applied an animation on it. Um, because if you don't take certain precautions, your animation will play back at the original location where it was created, even if you moved it. And this makes it difficult for you to move the object if you've changed your mind, or to clone the object and uh, reuse the animation at multiple locations, because it's always going to be playing back at the original location where it was uh, created. So I'm going to start with demonstrating this behavior, and then continue with how to solve this uh, problem. Okay, in order to do so, I have created a very uh, simple scene uh, with a cube, and um, this cube we, uh, we, we will animate. So we'll switch to our animation tab, create a new clip, and let's give it a name, let's say test, save. Alright, add curves and move over to frame. 30. Then we'll uh, move the uh, cube up. Frame 60, and we'll move it back down. Let's also uh, loop the animation. Okay, just like that. Okay, so we have a nice animation. But I, uh, I have changed my mind. I want to move the uh, object to the side, like this. And here is our problem. If I hit play again, we'll see that it snaps back to uh, the original position. And that's because if we look at our uh, location, our transform location, we'll see that the x value has changed. It is no longer zero. If we look at our uh, animation, we'll see that the position of x is still zero. And this is where our problem is. Because the object is uh, has moved in world space. And I'm going to tell you about world space and local space later. First, let's continue on, uh, on how to solve the problem. And the solution is quite simple. We need to create a parent object. And the cube needs to become the child of this new parent. So first, uh, let's, um, okay, let's uh, remove the animation from our cube. And we'll also reset its position back to zero and we'll delete our animation. Let's create a parent object, um, which is just an empty, an empty game object. Uh, we'll call it uh, parent object, like that. And we'll move the cube onto the parent object to make it to make it a child. Okay. So now we are going to uh, recreate our animation, but this time we'll create it on our parent object. So select the parent object, back to our animation tab, create new clip. Okay, there's our bouncing box again. <clears throat> okay, once again we want to uh, move our cube to the side. And this time if we hit play, we'll see that it plays back at the intended location. 
So, what's going on here? Why does it work this time? Okay, in order to explain, um, you first need to know the difference between world space and local space. Like I mentioned earlier, when our uh, object was first created, it was created in world space. And world space means that the point of an origin of the object um, is relative to its coordinates in the world. So when we create a new object, by default it will have x, y, and z coordinates set to zero. And this places the object in the center of our world. And then we also have local space. And local space is the location of an object relative to its parent. So if the parent moves, the child follows it without changing its own coordinates. Like we saw before, when we move the cube around to the side, we, uh, we saw that the cube's x position had changed. But if we move the parent object around, and, okay, let's reset our position and so I can show you. We move the parent object around, we'll, I don't know, put it somewhere here, like this. The position of our parent object has changed but the position of our cube object is still the same. And this is, uh, this is how it works. So I hope this, um, this tutorial was uh, useful. I hope you enjoyed it. And maybe I'll, uh, I'll see you next time.